You're listening to the EduTech Guys. EduTechGuys.com. This episode of EduTech Guys is brought to you by Turn It In. We empower students to do their best original work through fostering original thinking, superpowering educator assessment, and safeguarding academic integrity with a brand new AI writing detection solution built for educators. Our advanced AI writing detection technology is highly reliable and proficient in distinguishing between AI and human written text and is specialized for student writing. Get more information at turnitin.com. Hey, welcome back to the EduTech Guys. Real excited to have our next guest on this episode, and we're going to let her tell us who she is and what she does and all that kind of good stuff. So here we go. Hi, everyone. My name is Christine Callis. I work for Turnitin. Uh, hopefully you're familiar with turnitin.com. Um, not only do I work for Turnitin, but I'm also a veteran educator with over 15 years of middle school and high school classroom experience. Awesome. So um, we had the opportunity to see you at ISTE, but we had some issues with the audio, but we're so glad to have you on a a longer episode so we can get a little more discussion in here. So uh, I know some things have changed, but let's kind of pick up where we were and tell us what's going on with Turnitin now. And then I know you guys have some really interesting stuff that's happened since we saw you in June. So let's jump into that. Sure. Yeah. So in case uh, for any of your listeners who aren't familiar with Turnitin, just a little bit of background of of Turnitin. Uh, We're celebrating our 25 year anniversary this year. So we're really excited about that. Um, And we're a company that was founded um, on the basis of academic integrity. Um, So we started out as kind of an anti plagiarism tool. Um, So teachers or students can submit uh, work into our system and then the work kind of flags anything that uh, we think could potentially be plagiarized. And that could be matching one of uh, the student papers. We have over a billion student papers in our database. It could be from journal articles or publications or from uh, the World Wide Web, of course, Um, lots of copying and pasting from there. Uh, But of course, we've morphed along the way and have lots of really great feedback tools um, to provide to educators as well. So uh, when teachers are looking at student work, we provide lots of opportunity for them to give formative feedback um, Um, to their students. And then most recently and most exciting, of course, is we now have our AI indicator tool. Um, So our latest and greatest um, just released in April of 2023 um, is our tool that indicates um, what percentage of any student's work uh, uploaded into our system uh, that we think um, could potentially have been written by AI um, and primarily using chat GPT. Mm -hmm. Man, that is so. I, I, I want to before we jump into the you know the AI side of things, let's let's talk the human side of you know plagiarism and sometimes and and probably I, I'm I'm going to go on a limb and just say that I, I would venture that most of the times it's not intentional. Um, you know, a, a student is either writing something out that they're not quite putting into their own words, or like you said, you know, they copy and paste something in and, you know, that particular piece, they're not giving the proper credit. Uh, I think one of the things that uh, educators in general have to watch out for, and and just a little background for me in terms of uh, teaching experience, uh, I I taught uh, at a local community college uh, some English courses. Uh, And I had a couple of students who were really, I I don't know if the word is good at or bad at, because, you know, it depends on your perspective, but they used it a lot. They they, they used, you know, copy and paste a lot. Um, But it became, and rather than turn it into something punitive, especially, you know, at the first start of, of when they're doing it, uh, to me, it was important that I educate them and say, okay, look, you, you you can't just copy and paste because, you know, this doesn't belong to you. You didn't write this. So, you're going to have to reword it, cite it. Talk a little bit about the usage of turn it in as formative, like you mentioned, versus punitive. Yeah, I'm really, really glad that you brought that up. Um, yeah, we we definitely do not want to be known as the plagiarism police. That is not what we do, and that is not at the heart of our company. Great t-shirt, and our company's though. Mission. Great t-shirt. I had to say that would be a great t-shirt. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a t-shirt guy. So. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, um, and that, and that's a really great point, and why um, you know it is so important for us to have those formative tools built into our system um, to provide teachers with that mechanism for providing that feedback for their students. 
students. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Students need to learn how to cite their sources correctly. They need to be able to, you know, um, you know, show, take somebody else's idea and then, you know, put their own spin on it, but give credit where credit is due. Right. Um, so yeah, absolutely. We, we really are. That is really important to us um, to, to have that feedback mechanism that teachers can help their students um, learn along the way and, and learn the process of citing their sources and incorporating, you know, other people's uh, work into, into their work, but, but giving credit where credit is due. Um, I don't think I mentioned this last time we met, but that's also um, a really great segue into um, kind of a newer tool. It's been around for a couple years, but we also now have Draft Coach, um, which is a student facing tool. And so Draft Coach um, allows students to be able to kind of check their work during the drafting process. It's available in Google Docs or um, Microsoft Word for the web, um, where we will give them some feedback along the way of um, what, how, you know, how they are correctly citing their sources or incorrectly citing their sources uh, within their work during the drafting process. So, um, you know, again, we're constantly iterating, constantly coming up with new tools and, and ways to help students learn along the way and not just, um, you know, having it be a punitive tool. Well, and one of the things that uh, I like the, about the concept of that is because they are using this along the way, they're not hit with it, you know, when the, the, the that kind of first draft that they're handing in to the instructor, or in some cases, the final draft that's being handed in, and then, oh, boom, we got you, you know. I, I, again, unfortunately, there are a lot of educators who try to use it uh, in, in a more punitive fashion, you know, not the way it's designed to be. Um, and they don't, and the students don't necessarily know that they, well, well, they may not know that they did it um, or aren't necessarily given an opportunity to fix it before it gets to that point, before it's too late to fix it. Right, right. And that is exactly the the, the kind of purpose behind the draft coach tool so that to, the students do have the oppor opportunity to make those corrections before they submit a final draft or submit um, their paper to their teacher. Yeah, that's very cool. So along that line, do you um, to provide some training or even a, the ability for um, educators to, be, to, to become better at being uh, mm. giving good feedback, you know, and, and you know, helping them uh, make sure that they're they're there every step of the way along at the way the students are writing to enhance their learning and enhance their writing. Yeah, we do have a whole trained team of um, implementation specialists um, that are available to provide training to schools um, when they do sign up and subscribe to our product. Um, we actually recommend doing training every couple years, even if uh, school has been a continuous turn it in customer, because we are always coming up with new tools and, and different um, things that are incorporated into our different products. Um, but in addition to that, um, our website is also a really, really great resource for teachers. So. Um, um, from our website, we have the Turnitin blog, we have Turnitin Vidbits, we have a teacher resources page. So um, tons of, of resources just from Turnitin.com that are free for teachers to use um, and give lots of really great suggestions of how to incorporate our products into their teaching and curriculum. That's yeah. cool. That's exactly what's needed. Okay, so let's jump into it. Every 10 blog articles I read a day, eight of them are about um, AI, chat GPT. <laughs> so let's talk about what Turnitin is doing along that lines to help educators and help, most importantly, the students. Yeah, um, it is definitely the hot topic. Um, I would say nine out of 10 yeah. <laughs> blogs are about yeah. AI, not, not even eight. Exactly. Uh, it, it definitely is, is the hot topic in the education world. Um, and we're really happy and excited to be able to support teachers along the way. Um, so one of the things that um, is really helpful for us is that you know we aren't some new startup company that's just come up with an AI indicator tool because AI is the hot thing in the market right now. Um, as I said, we're celebrating 25 years at Turnitin this year and academic integrity has always been important to us. So this is just the next step, I guess I would say, in academic integrity and us helping um, to support, you know, academic integrity for teachers in the classroom. So what's really great um, is that our AI indicator is already built into our existing workflow um, through the rest of 2023. So when we kind of surveyed teachers as AI was becoming popular, um, you know, teachers said, we just, we want something we can use. We would rather have a tool we can use now uh, than wait, you know, for you to make something that's perfect. Um, so we built it into the existing workflow of all of our products currently through the end of the year. 
And what's great about that is it also allows um, teachers to give us feedback. Um, so even just from the last time I spoke to you guys, we've made some updates to, to the AI indicator product. Um, one of them just released this week, for example, is that um, Previously, the the report that that teachers get when they when they are reviewing this, the teachers, uh, the students' work, excuse me, um, wasn't downloadable. It's now downloadable as a PDF, so a teacher can download that report and take that report and have a conversation with their student. Yeah. Um, so we're constantly making iterations to the to the tool as we're getting feedback from teachers. Um, but basically, the way that the AI indicator works is when a student um, uploads a paper into Turnitin, um, they get get a AI indication score. So it highlights the portion of the paper uh, that we believe was generated by some sort of AI tool, again, chat GPT being the primary, um, and gives that percentage, a percentage score for the teacher uh, to, to then be able to look at. So um, for those of your listeners who don't really know how AI writing works, um, basically it's kind of like predictive text on your cell phone. So similar to when you're making a, a text on your cell phone, it can predict the next word that you're gonna type in that text message. AI writing works very similarly. So our AI indicator is looking for basically what is very statistically average writing within the paper and highlighting that as potentially being generated by AI. Another really cool part about Turnitin is that because we have 25 years of experience and over a billion papers in our student database, mm. we also are really looking at student generated writing. So we have a really good feel with all of that background that we have of what student writing looks like. So our ind ind AI indicator is also looking for what we believe to be student writing versus what we believe to be AI generated writing. So it's kind of looking for both, um, not just really one or the other, giving a potentially more accurate score so so are we we're fighting ai with ai i'm just <laughs> <laughs> but you know with 25 years of databasing you guys have all the data that you need to you know for uh, your ai to actually go listen we can figure this out and we can we can actually predict this at a much higher level than anyone else can do at this time yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And again, because we have a really great relationship with already existing customers and schools who have been customers of ours for a long time, we can go to them you know, and have that conversation and get that feedback um, from them. Our AI tool was just released in April of this year and we've already had over 65 million submissions um, that we can look at. And so we're gathering feedback from those 65 million submissions even already and saying like of those 65 million submissions, you know, this percentage has this this much AI writing or this percentage of papers has that much AI writing. So even that data is giving us, you know, more information that we can continue um, to morph and, and make our product even better. So along those same lines, as you're as you're gathering data and as the data is input into your systems that are kind of tracking and figuring, is there a mechanism or, or some kind of a way that uh, educators primarily, who who I assume are the ones who would be doing this kind of reporting, is there a way for them to give feedback and say, "Hey, this was flagged as AI, but it is not AI." You know, this was we we you know I know for a fact that this student you know writes this particular way, or you know, based on my history with this student, I know that this is this student's writing. This is not AI. Is there a way for them to kind of tweak the system, if you will, or help the system learn? Yeah. Absolutely. So you actually bring up really two really good points there. So number one, to answer your question directly, um, when the uh, teacher pulls up the um, AI uh, generated report, uh, there is an in-app feedback mechanism. So it's a little button at the bottom of the report. It has the Turnitin logo on it. They can press that button and there's a feedback form where teachers can provide feedback. Um, they can also open a support case with our support team. Um, so through, again, through our website, you can find uh, a way to open a support case, either of those will give that feedback to our AI team um, and, you know, have that feedback provided. But I think what's really important that uh, you also bring up from asking that question is that we don't want to be the be all end all, right? So we know that the teacher is still making the best decision. So you said, you know, hey, as a teacher, I know this is my student's voice, even though maybe it was flagged as, as AI. And that's really, really important to acknowledge um, because we know that the teacher is still the ultimate decision maker, we're just trying to provide some evidence so that the teacher can have that conversation with the student. 
I, I'm curious, and I don't know if you know in terms of uh, what kind of input you get and feedback you're getting from how educators are using Turnitin as an educational tool in their classrooms. Um, but w- one of the things that, that, that kind of popped in my head is we were talking about how, you know, nine out of 10 blogs are written about AI, but like, you know, you could almost probably put that number as the number of blogs that have been written by AI at this point, right? You know, AI is generating these blogs. So I'm curious if you've if you've heard of any educators who are taking blog posts, running it in there, and then sharing that feedback with the students and saying, listen, <laughs> as you are doing research and as you are reading blogs, you know, they're not all written by humans anymore. You know, so this is AI generated and using Turnitin as the tool to facilitate that. Have you heard stuff about that? Yeah, um, I, I don't know if it would be blog posts specifically, but definitely I think there are teachers out there that are using AI generated text in some form or another and doing those kinds of demonstrations with their students. So it absolutely is a really great um, teaching tool um, for, for um, instructors to be able to use with their students and kind of showing how it works. Yeah. 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 So one think. thing I'd like to jump into this maybe a different direction, but um, I, in my notes I had grade scope down because this is a big deal for teachers is grading. Can, can we? Can you talk to that just a little bit for our listeners to hear about what they, what it does? Yeah, sure. So uh, Gradescope is, uh, works in a couple different ways. Um, it's basically a paper to digital type tool. So if a student is completing a, an assignment on paper, handwritten rather than you know typing it, um, th- it can be captured and uploaded into our system. And then the Gradescope can be trained to grade that set of papers. Oh, wow. So traditionally in the past, um, Turnitin has worked really well for English teachers, um, I myself was a social science teacher. So in my history classes, when students were doing long form writing, I used Turnitin a lot. Um, but when it comes to math and sciences, maybe lab reports or, you know, math problems that, that um, students are completing, Turnitin, you know, our traditional software doesn't really work as well for those kinds of assignments. So Gradescope is our answer to more of a math and science kind of based um, curriculum and being able to grade um, for teachers in a much more efficient manner. Um, math, science, those types of assignments um, that aren't necessarily essay-based like our traditional um, software, anti-plagiarism software is. Oh, that seems like it would be quite popular amongst several, uh, especially higher ed even, because that's uh, you know there's so many papers to grade and so much work to grade at that level. Yeah. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Um, it has been adopted by a lot of our, our higher edu- uh, higher education institutions, yeah. Super neat. So, um, okay, any cool stuff on the horizon? Because, you know, with AI, it's so funny how it's all been the last 8 to 12 months. It just seems like it's blown up everywhere. What else is coming down the pipe for you guys? Uh, is there anything you can share with us that you're looking forward to that, you know, is going to be the next big thing? Yeah, so just um, some things that I know that are important that we're hearing from educators. Um, Number one, right now, our AI indicator only works in English language, so uh, potentially other languages. That would be something that our team could potentially be working on. Um, And then, um, you know, chat GPT seems to be really prevalent among, um, you know, students for use right now. They're all, a lot of them are aware of that, Um, but there are other tools that students use, um, Quillbot and, you know, kind of word spinners and those Mm -hmm. things. Um, so kind of potentially looking, um, at how we can, um, see the indication of those tools being used, um, as well. So those are some things that our team's kind of looking at and potentially on the horizon. Awesome. Oh, go ahead. Uh, No, I was just going to say, you, you had mentioned earlier that there were some new things that have changed and I was just going to make sure that we, you know, I know we've talked about some of the adaptations, especially with, uh, some of the, the, in the, uh, changes to the AI program, that kind of thing. I was just going to make sure that we covered all the things that, that you were kind of hinting at at first. I just want to make sure we I don't I don't I don't, don't, don't want to leave us hanging going, oh we, we missed this. She was chomping at the bit and we missed it. So I don't know. I just want to make sure we it's covered just, everything. Just an excuse for me to come back and do another session that's with right. you well, guys. Right. Hey, you don't need an excuse. You don't need an excuse. You come back anytime you want to come back. So along that line uh, oh good. 
Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, the, the downloadable PDF report is the new big thing this week. Um, I think also since the last time I met with you guys, um, we weren't uh, able to detect any text that was in like a table format um, that was submitted. So we're now also looking at text that's included in kind of a table format. Um, and then since I did meet with you guys in July, um, we've just updated our scoring a little bit as well to provide a little bit more accurate scoring uh, with the AI uh, report. So yeah. those are the, the kind of big three updates from this summer. Yeah, so always doing the little tweaks that actually amount to so much help for the educators that are using Turnitin. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And that's the key word is help. You know, we, we want to provide as much help and support as we possibly can, but knowing, you know, that the teacher knows their student the most, the best, and is, is ultimately going to, you know, be making those decisions. Yep. I, and I love the fact that you guys use the word integrity a lot in everything that you do. That's that's in your, your press, that's in your websites, it's in all your releases. That's that's exactly what it is. It's academic integrity. So um, that's really awesome. So our listeners want to find out more and want to get in touch with you guys or you know, find out about the product. What's the best way they can do that? Really good question. So our website, turnitin.com, is the best place to go. It's the a wealth of information. Um, you could spend hours and hours looking through all, everything that is linked through our website. So starting at turnitin.com is the best, but then I did mention the blog um, earlier and uh, the blog is turnitin.com backslash blog. Um, so that's another great resource for, for teachers. Um, and then through the website, um, there is another link to a video page specifically. So we have what are called vidbits, which are just short videos uh, that teachers uh, with uh, everything from suggestions of things that teachers can use in their classroom to uh, ways to incorporate our tools into their teaching. Um, and then for any product knowledge, we do have a, a specific product updates page that teachers can subscribe to. And then anything new um, that does come out with our products, they can be updated um, as things become available. So start at turnitin.com and branch out from there. Tons and tons of resources from our, our homepage. Awesome. Hey, we want to thank you so much for coming on the show and we hope to do a few more of these in the coming months. That sounds fun to yeah. you guys. Awesome. Hey, once again, thanks for coming on. Everyone, don't forget to visit turnitin.com. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, David. You're welcome. You've been listening to the EduTech Guys. EduTechGuys.com. <laughs>